हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम आतिका ताजदार डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग एंड जीआईएस इन फॉरेस्ट्री टू मीट द वेरियस इंफॉर्मेशन रिक्वायरमेंट्स इन फॉरेस्ट मैनेजमेंट डिफरेंट डाटा सोर्सेज लाइक फील्ड सर्वे एरियल फोटोग्राफी एंड सेटेलाइट इमेजरी इज यूज डिपेंडिंग ऑन द लेवल ऑफ डिटेल रिक्वायर्ड एंड द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द एरिया अंडर स्टडी बिफोर एरियल फोटोग्राफी वॉज यूज For forest management purposes, information was generally obtained by means of field surveys, identifying and measuring forest type and standards. This is still by far the most accurate and detailed way of measurement. Although the lack of geographical positioning system did not allow accurate location of the forest classified, the method is, however, very elaborate. time consuming and expensive and it is nowadays used predominantly for research purposes and for intensive sustainable production purposes the traditional aerial photograph resulting from different film types was and still is an important remote sensing tool knowledge of photogrammetry and photography is essential for its proper use for many decades the use of aerial photographic data has been accepted by many forest institutions as a tool in various forest activities such as planning mapping inventory harvesting area determination road layout and registration of decline and dead trees etc on a local regional or national scale for the purpose of consistently and repeatedly monitor forest over larger areas it is preferable to use remote sensing data and automated image analysis technique several type of remote sensing data include aerial photography multi spectral scanner which is mss radar radio detection and ranging lidar light detection and ranging laser and videography data have been used by forest agencies to detect identify classify evaluate and measure various forest cover type and their changes over the past decades tremendous progress has been made in demonstrating the potentials and limitations for identifying and mapping various earth surface features using optical remote sensing data for large area satellite imagery has been shown effective for forest classification and consequently mapping it is emphasized that one of the advantages of the use of remote sensing in forest survey is the relative short time in which most of the required information can be obtained gradually other type of remote sensing tool which were developed with which was forest object properties were registered from the air or from space the new technologies integrating satellite imagery analytical photogrammetry and geo information system offer new possibilities especially for general interpretation and mapping and will be a challenge for future research and application the analog photographic data of aerial photograph as well as the satellite scanning data can be digitized and used for multi spectral or multi temporal classification and corrections geometrical or radiometrical A scanning technique are also applicable in airplanes nowadays the product of this aerospace technology are considered to be superior to and a replacement of the old fashion analog aerial photography however this technology is additional and complementary to the aerial photography sometimes the product are used alone but in most cases a combination with aerial photographs is applied also field work remain essential when applying remote sensing techniques various factor can be mentioned to explain why in managed forest the operational application of remote sensing in the estimation of number of stand parameters is rel- relatively low foresters are in general conservative in the beginning they were reserved in applying aerial photography and nowadays other remote sensing techniques are not embraced whole heartedly there is a hesitation to take risk when departing from traditional data sources lack of knowledge of access to data of the specialized technology is an other reason for the limited application the earth atmosphere contain carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases which 
that act as a protective layer, causing the planet to be warmer than it would otherwise be. This heat retention is critical in maintaining habitable temperatures. If there were significantly less CO2 in the atmosphere, global temperature would drop below level to which ecosystems and human society have adapted. As CO2 level rises, mean global temperatures are also expected to rise as increasing amount of solar radiation are trapped inside the greenhouse. The concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is determined by a continuous flow among the stores of carbon in the atmosphere, the ocean, the earth biological systems and its geological materials. As long as the amount of carbon flowing in the atmosphere as CO2 and out in the form of plant material and dissolved carbon are in balance, the level of carbon in the atmosphere remain constant. Photosynthesis leads to the conversion of carbon dioxide into organic carbon in growing plants and some of the carbon thus sequestered as plant biomass is subsequently lost through respiration. A large net flux of carbon from atmosphere to tree accompanies early tree growth. Over time, the net rate of exchange decreases due to increasing carbon loss through respiration or the loss of subsequent decomposition of plant material as litter and woody debris. A large amount of carbon is released to the atmosphere as trees die and decompose. Other mechanism of carbon loss from forest system include physical removal of organic matter or rapid loss of through natural disturbance such as fire. A significant form of removal in United States is harvest of wood, but carbon can also be removed through runoff or leaching through soil. Subsequent forest regeneration and growth can then re-establish the section of forest as a sink of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Forests are influenced by natural and human causes including harvesting, over harvesting and degradation, large scale occurrence of wildfire fire control, pests and disease outbreaks and conversion to non-forest use, particularly agriculture and pastures. These disturbances often cause forests to become sources of CO2 because the rate of net primary productivity is exceeded by total respiration or oxidation of plants, soil, dead organic matter and net ecosystem production. At the same time, however, some areas of harvested and degraded forests or agricultural and pastures land are abundant and revert naturally to forest or are converted to plantation, thus become carbon sink. Example, the rate of respiration from plants, soil and dead organic matter is exceeded by net primary productivity. The current role of forest in global carbon cycle is not only a function of present forest land use but also of past use and disturbance. Prior to the century, CO2 emission from changes in forest land use, mainly caused by agricultural expansion in mid and high latitude countries, were higher than emission from the combustion of fossil fuel from the turn of the century until about the 1930s, global CO2 emissions from changes in forest land use were similar in magnitude to those from fossil fuel combustion. After about the 1940s, CO2 emission from the changes in forest land use in the top tropics dominated the flux from the biota to the atmosphere. Since then, worldwide fossil fuel use has soared. Biotic emission from the mid and high latitude regions has declined greatly as forests expanded into abandoned agricultural land and as log stand redrew and deforestation in the tropic has accelerated. Role of forest play an important role in global carbon cycles. Policies that influence the rate of conversion of forest to other land use or encourage afforestation and reforestation of deforested land have the potential to have a large impact on concentration of atmospheric CO2. Forest conversion is the second largest global source of anthropogenic carbon dioxide emission and is likely responsible for 10 to 25 percent of carbon dioxide emission worldwide. Within the U.S. forest, 
a net carbon sinks sequestering approximately 780 global atmospheric burden per year CO2 which is approximately 11 percent of US greenhouse gas emissions. A number of existing and proposed policy instruments speci specifically include the use of forests to capture CO2. Global climate change is increasingly recognized as the greatest global threat facing humanity. For the majority of the world's population, the persistent problem of food insecurity, rural poverty, the struggle to develop, sustain new sources of economic growth must now be considered against a backdrop of certainty and change in historical climate patterns. Separately and together, government and both international and domestic organizations not only need to continue responding to the immediate concern of extreme poverty, environmental degradation and social unrest, but in addition, must now begin to prepare communities and entire regions to adopt to uncertain future climatic regimes as well as to make tangible contribution in first slowing and ultimately re-establishing a balance in greenhouse gas exchange at a planetary scale. Under mounting time pressure, there is an urgent need to evolve win-win solutions that address both these immediate local and long-term global threats. When the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere increase, temperature at the Earth's surface is also expected to increase. Climate models developed in the 90s have shown that global surface air temperature may increase by 1.4 degrees Celsius to 5.8 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Recent IPCC 2007 report predicted increase in temperature with more precision at 1.8 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. It has a linked temperature increase to increase in the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. Role of remote sensing and assessment of biomass or carbon, a variety of approaches and data sources have been used to estimate forest above ground biomass. A comprehensive review of remote sensing based estimation of above ground biomass have been completed categorized by data sources. First is field measurement, second is remotely sensed data, third is ancillary data used in GIS based modeling. Estimation from field measurement may entail destructive sampling. A direct measurement and the application of algometric equations above ground biomass is necessary for studying productivity, carbon cycle, nutrient allocation and fuel accumulation in terrestrial ecosystems. Remote sensing technique allows scientists to examine properties and processes of ecosystem and their interannual variability at multiple scale because satellite observation can be obtained over large areas of interest with high revalidation frequencies. Many studies have demonstrated that indices such as spectral vegetation index which is SVI, simple ratio which is SR, normalized difference vegetation index which is NDVI and corrected normalized difference vegetation index which is NDVIC obtained from satellite data are useful predictors of leaf area index which is also called LAI, biomass and productivity in grassland and forest. A stand level biomass is frequently calculated from linear and non-linear regression model established by species with field measurements. Although estimates of above ground biomass vary with the species composition, tree height, basal area and stand structure, bowl diameter at breast height which is DBH is the most commonly used is widely available variable for calculating above ground biomass. Numerous regression models have been developed to estimate above ground biomass in the Great Lakes region while three models are accurate at tree, plot and stand levels. They are limited when considering a spatial pattern analysis of above ground biomass across the landscape. In order to scale above ground biomass estimate to the landscape level, the estimate have to be linked with various vegetation indices derived by remote sensing data. Past studies have shown varying degree of success in estimating forest biomass and primary production from remote sensing data in temperate and tropical forest worldwide. Recent studies suggest that such relationship 
very temporarily and spatially. However, biomass estimate at the landscape level are necessary for understanding processes of the target landscape and provide baseline data for future studies. Model derived from remote sensing need further calibration with ground data before they can be used appropriately to predict above ground biomass for a given landscape. Forest information need and remote sensing in practice. Researchers choose one or several types of remotely sensed data according to their information needs. The information needs are converted to specific properties of remotely sensed data such as spatial resolution, spectral resolution and temporal resolution. Table 1 lists commonly used sensors on earth observation satellite that are still operational. These sensors provide diverse remotely sensed data with a unique configuration of image resolution such as spatial resolution, spectral resolution and temporal resolution. Jensen in 2007 defined spatial resolution as a measure of the smallest angular or linear separation between two objects that can be resolved by the remote sensing system. In other words, the spatial resolution stands for how detailed information the remotely sensed data could provide. Temporal resolution can be defined as how often the sensor record imagery of a particular area. For example, the well-known Landsat Thematic mapper has 16 day temporal resolution. Another key property of a remotely sensing system is a spectral resolution, which is defined as the number and dimension or size of a specific wavelength intervals referred to as band or channels in the electromagnetic spectrum to which a remote sensing instrument is sensitive. Likewise, take the Landsat thematic mapper as an example. The Landsat thematic mapper imagery has seven band, six optical band plus one thermal band. It is noteworthy that the spectral resolution is mainly applied to describe optical imagery and it cannot be used for radar or lidar remotely sensed data. In fact, the aforementioned data collection can be described as selecting the unique configuration of image resolutions or properties which can be used to meet certain research need. Endeavoured to clearly demonstrate the relationship on, of information need and the selection of appropriate data and processing method in remote sensing for studies of vegetation conditions. The issues need to be taken into account including the scale at which the target must be measured, example landscape level or tree level information, the attribute of in, interest which is change, condition, spatial extent, cost timeless and repeatability. Under remote sensing technologies in forest studies, optical sensors have been commonly used in forestry studies. However, the use of hyperspectral sensor, radar and lidar is still relatively underdeveloped. It is worth paying more attention to the application of hyperspectral sensors, radar and lidar in forest studies. Hyperspectral sensors. Optical sensor mentioned above which are divided from the dimension of a spatial resolution are categorized into multispectral sensor. By contrast, there is a group of sensor called hyperspectral sensor, which accordingly generate hyperspectral data. Hyperspectral data have the ability to collect ample spectral information across the continuous spectrum, generally with 100 or more contiguous spectral bands. Shepard in 2004 listed the existing hyperspectral sensor acquiring imagery from space including the Hyperion sensor on NASA's EO-1 which is National Aeronautic and Space Administration's Earth Observing 1. The CRIS which is compact high resolution imaging spectrometer sensor on the European Space Agency's PROBA project for onboard autonomy satellite and the FTHSI Fourier transform hyperspectral imager sensor on the US Air Force Research Labs mighty sat second satellite radar and lidar beside optical sensor radar and lidar play more and more important roles in remote sensing of forest studies 
radar the acronym of radio detection and ranging is based on the transmission of long wavelength microwaves example 3 to 25 centimeter through the atmosphere and then recording the amount of energy back scattered from the terrain briefly introduce the phased array type l band synthetic aperture radar which is PALSAR on board advanced land observing satellite which is ALOS and radar sat 2 operated by the Canadian Space Agency which is CSA and McDonnell Detwiller and Associates Limited which is MDA both could provide fully polarized SAR data to support Polsar which is polarimetric SAR technology example Polsar decomposition which has achieved promising result in many environmental researches. Light detection and ranging LIDAR also called laser altimetry is an active remote sensing technology that utilizes a laser to illuminate a target or object and a photodiode to register the backscatter radiation. It has been widely accepted that LIDAR is capable of accurate or even precise vertical information. Therefore, it is believed that LIDAR will bring forestry studies into an unprecedented age. A specified application of remote sensing in forest studies. Young and Gies in 2003 summarized forest science and management into th three categories. Forest bio biology and ecology. Example, forest biomes of the world. Forest ecophysiology forest soil, forest ecosystem ecology, landscape ecology and forest trees, disease and insect interaction. Second one is forest management and multiple uses, example forest management and stewardship, non-industrial private forest, measuring and monitoring forest resources, silviculture and ecosystem management, forest wildlife management forest and range land management, forest and watershed management, forest and recreation behavior, behavior and management of forest fire, timber harvesting, wood product and economics and the management of forest for wood and amenity values. And the third one is forest and society, example urban forest and social forest, the co community based management of natural resources. As a matter of fact, remote sensing has more or less served all three categories. Several examples in remote sensing of forestry studies are provided as follows. The selected examples were include in the paper that were either highly cited or newly published science citation index, which is SCI papers. Timber volume estimation. Timber volume is simply function of tree height and diameter of tree at breast height. There are some adopted techniques to calculate the volume of standing trees, example volume table and volume equation. These techniques also depend upon the species in the forest stand and the region where the stand is located. Thus, the timber volume can be calculated by using any of the above technique depending upon desired accuracy, money, time and labor. In Malili Slips, before estimating timber volume from aerial photographs, the relationship between dbh and crown diameter of upper canopy of tree were first investigated. As species identification was impossible on 1 is to 10,000 scale photographs, all species were included in the test. The regression equation was found to be d is equal to 3.5 c plus 12.3, where d is equal to dbh c is equal to crown diameter species decomposition turner et al in 2003 stated that the recent advances in remote sensing such as the availability of remotely sensed data with high spatial and spectral resolution make it possible to detect key environmental parameters which can be applied to determine the distribution and abundance of species across landscapes via ecological model this approach in general referred to as indirect remote sensing of biodiversity plays a major role in this research area.
For example, Defres et al. in 2000 applied the 1 kilometer advanced very high resolution radiometer which is AVHRR to estimate and map percentage tree cover and associated proportion of trees with different leaf longevity, evergreen and deciduous, and leaf type which is broadleaf and needle leaf. Forest ecophysiology, Coakley and Clark in 1999 developed an approach to estimate the concentrations of nitrogen, lignin and cellulose in dried and ground leaves using band depth analysis of absorption feature. Centered at 1.73 micrometer, 2.10, 2.10 micrometer and 2.30 micrometer and stepwise multiple linear regression. As mentioned above, hyperspectral remote sensing was used to estimate the leaf pigment of sugar maple in the Algoma region, Canada and promising results were obtained. Forest Ecosystem Jin et al. in 2011 developed an algorithm based on semi-empirical priestley taylor approach to estimate continental scale evapotranspiration using MODIS satellite observation. The seasonal variation in ET has been indicated as a key factor to the soil moisture and net ecosystem CO2 exchange through water loss from an ecosystem. Lesky et al. in 2002 reviewed LIDAR remote sensing for ecosystem studies. LIDAR is capable of accurately measuring vertical information beside the horizontal dimension such as the three-dimensional distribution of plant canopies and subcanopy topography. More specifically, LIDAR can provide accurate estimate vegetation height cover, canopy structure, leaf area index and above ground biomass etc. Measuring and monitoring forest resources. Remote sensing can play a major part in locating mature and old growth forest and applied a number of remote sensing techniques to estimate forest age and structure. Over a 12 lakh hectare area was investigated and an accuracy of 82% was obtained. Maps of species richness have been recognized as a useful tool for biodiversity conservation and management due to its capability of explicitly describing information on the spatial distribution and composition of biological communities. Damage assessment. The use of remote sensing in the detection of the effects of damaging agents on a forest precedes most other remote sensing forestry uses. Forest damage is defined as any type and intensity of an effect on one or more trees produced by an external agent that temporarily or permanently reduces the financial value or impair or remove the biological ability of growth and reproduction. In the United States, insect and diseases account for a timber loss equal to our annual growth and this loss exceeds that from fire by seven times because the damaging agent are dynamic forces entomologist and pathologist find that remote sensing technique are most valuable when they are used at critical period of stress one damage causing agent may produce a number of damage syndromes conversely syndrome may have been caused by a number of agent insects Forest insect cause symptoms of tree and forest injury which are more easily recognized than those caused by forest disease or air pollution. For example, defoliators of coniferous or hardwood trees frequently cause the foliage to change color from a normal green yellow to yellow or dark yellow red. These changes are readily visible occur over large areas and can be mapped by different observation. When many trees are attacked at one time and begin showing sign of stress by changes in foliage color, they can be differentiated from healthy trees by remote sensing methods. Diseases Most visible symptoms of forest disease are evident only when the disease is far advanced in the host tree. As with insect damage, Manifestations of disease show as discoloration and thinness of foliage. Oak was affected by fungus which occlude the water conducting tissues of oak. These symptoms show up as dying back of the top and decoloration of wilting oaks. Damages caused by Cronartium 
Ribicola fissure on pinus strobes are easy to detect on medium scale color and color infrared photos. Deforestation Since deforestation is a continuous process, efforts to inventory and monitor changes are very closely related. There are many insert uncertainties about actual rate of deforestation, hence the need for accurate up-to-date monitoring schemes. Technique used to inventory these areas also can be applied in their systematic monitoring to create a time series data describing rate and magnitude of deforestation. In Rondonia, Brazil, for example, Landsat MSS in 1980 and TM in 1986 imagery were used to define the area and deforestation rate of a study of approximately 30,000 square kilometer. The researcher found that 3,168 square kilometer of new clearing occurred between 1980 and 1986. Historical records have also been used in GIS to identify changes in forest cover. Between 1979 and 1984, a land resource inventory project was completed in Jikhu Khola watershed in Nepal. Land use information was digitized using 1 is to 50,000 scale topographic map as the base for information collected by surveying in 1980. Land use data that had been divided into three broad categories in the original 1950 topographic map were also digitized. The area of each land use type was calculated in the GIS and then two layers were subtracted. Although somewhat crude, this information was found to be very useful in producing a land use change overview map. The 30 year interval revealed that about 50% of the forest land has been lost to shrub and agriculture. A second three year project was initiated in 1988 to examine processes relating to soil erosion, sediment transport, soil fertility changes and land use changes in a quantitative way in the Jikhu Khola watershed. Forest and agricultural land uses were mapped and digitized using 1 is to 20,000 scale and aerial photographs taken in 1972 and 1989. Changes in the areas of four land use were calculated for each date forest, grassland, irrigated agriculture and sloping terraces. In this case, using a larger scale and a different land cover scheme, the researchers found that the forest area had not decreased substantially, only 1% during 17 years. Forest fire. Fire is one of the disaster causing threats to the forest and the ecosystem throughout the world. Forest has adverse effect on soil, forest and humans. During the process of burning, the soil nutrients are reduced and the soil is left bare making it more susceptible to the both soil and water erosion. The forest cover is drastically reduced through the death of fire intolerant tree species. Fire also lead to an increase in greenhouse gas emission. Air pollution due to smoke causes prolonged effect on human health such as respiratory and cardiovascular problem. Mongolia has a serious increase in forest fire. Giglio et al. in 2003 presented an enhanced con contextual fire detection algorithm in order to identify a smaller, cooler fire with a significantly lower false alarm rate and promising results were obtained. Current and potential remote sensing methods used to assess the fire behavior and affect an ecological response to fire. Urban forest in Jensen et al. 2003 investigated the relationship between urban forest leaf area index and household energy uses in a mid-sized city and concluded that the increase of LAI resulted in less energy usage. Zhang et al. in 2007 applied remote sensing to map the distribution, classification and ecological significance of urban forest in Jinan city. Thank you.